Hey everybody, back out in the shop again working on the S10 and we've got a few things we're going to accomplish today. So let's go over here and take a look and I'll show you what's going down today. So if you saw my last video, we put the throttle cable on there but all this is going to have to come back off. I found out once I got my ACES wiring harness on here that I have a fuel pressure sensor and I had ran my wires all nice and neat under the intake. So in running my fuel line out of the frame up and around the brake master cylinder, I ran it into the fuel rail. I do not like this bend right here. So what I'm gonna do, the, the ACES kit came with a fitting that has a port for the fuel pressure sensor. And actually the kit I ordered had a fuel pressure sensor or an oil pressure sensor. And I used it for an oil pressure sensor. And I got to thinking, man, I'd really like to have the ability to see my fuel pressure on my seven inch display. So I went to the parts store. This is the only one they had. I couldn't find the AC Delco, but I ordered the doorman, or I didn't order it. They had it in stock actually. If I was gonna order it, I would have uh, ordered the AC Delco. But I'm gonna put the stock oil pressure sending unit back in it and use the one that was supplied with the ACES kit so I can see it inside on the dash. So um, I actually got a straight on here. So what I'm gonna do is put this straight on here and I've ordered a 90 AN6 uh, on one side and AN6 uh, female on the other, male on one end, male on the other, or female on the other. And I'm what my hope is, is that it's gonna kick this out enough that it bends around this uh, PCV line so that I have enough room to put my fitting in here and I don't have to change this over to a 90. Also, what we've got going on when we get the intake, I'm, I'm gonna have to take the intake back off and put it back on, but I am gonna take this throttle body off. I'm gonna do some mods to it, or a mod to it. Um, I was watching another guy's channel. I can't take credit for this. It was MRE Motorsports, and he suggested putting a seal on this side, on the throttle uh, linkage side, behind the spring that would prevent air leaks. I've heard and seen videos on YouTube, these things are notorious to whistle and suck air and all that kind of stuff. And it causes them a tuner's, they say it's the tuner's worst nightmare. Um, what I did do first is I did use GM, this is the GM idle air control sensor and the throttle position sensor. These are our factory uh, OEMs rather than the uh, aftermarket or the overseas knockoffs. So I'm hoping that will help that part. But we're gonna take this spring out put this seal in there. So first thing I got to do, I'm going to start on this fuel line. We're going to get it on. We're going to get our oil pressure sending unit put in and I'll show you the end results. And I'm, I'm just making this video to show you guys some of the things I did. I wished I would have thought far enough ahead to, to have put this wire out of the back, but maybe you'll get some ideas on how I run my fuel line, how um, I'm hooking everything up. And I love this, this tip that I got from another YouTuber. Like I said, I can't take credit for it. So Let's get this intake off, get the throttle body off, get all these parts installed, and then we'll take a look. The main thing I want to check out is this fuel line. I hope that works out, and then I'll show you what we're going to do here. So stay tuned. Okay, we got the throttle body over here, but I was gonna show you the modifications that I made. I talked to about them earlier. Actual GM sensors on the side for your idle air control and your 
throttle position sensor. And basically what we're going to do is take this lever off. We are going to make sure that we count the revolutions so we know how much tension to put back on this spring. Basically there's a three millimeter set screw here. We're going to put this seal in there. And I went through my sockets and the best one I could find, I tried a 5 8 to drive it in. It's almost the same size. I don't know if this goes all the way down in there or not, so I don't want to damage any part of the housing. But a 14 millimeter will work. And I've got a 9 16 that's got a tapered and it just, just barely undersized. So that's what we're going to do. Again, I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm going to get this put on or in, get this put back on, get the throttle body put back on. And we will go take a look at the uh, fuel lines, how they turned out, and the, the wiring routing. Let's get this going. We'll get it back on the truck. We'll show you the end result. Okay, here it is. Intake torque down, throttle bodies installed. We've got our fuel pressure gauges back here. I'll show you the, the grand tour and I'll let you go. So starting here, I did get my seal inside of there. It will not drive all the way flush. So don't try to beat it all the way flush. It'll stick out probably a 16th, maybe a little more of an inch there. I did use some 680 Loctite. It's for like bearing mount surfaces on this vent tube here to kind of lock it in place. It does kind of slide around. If you've ever purchased one of these Amazon or eBay throttle bodies, um, they will do that. So I'm hoping that'll cure the vacuum leak and the whistle that I hear about online. Uh, I've never experienced it, but we're gonna try to head it off at the pass before we get there. Moving around, I did have to relocate my wires out from under my intake back down to the outside of the fuel rail. My coolant temperature sensor, and as you can see back here, I've got my fuel pressure sensor. So this is how I plumbed it in. I used the fitting that came with it, plumbed it into my fuel rail, and I've got a 90 here that goes into the straight on my fuel line. I know that's a lot more leak points, but it turned out really well. If you can see down in there, it clears everything. Plus now I've got digital fuel pressure on my dash, plus I can look under the hood and see manual fuel pressure, and I'm loving the way this turned out. I did leave all my tags on here until I get it running, make sure I've got everything. I don't wanna miss nothing, cut all the, the uh, labels off and then cause myself a headache later. In my last video, you probably saw these are, let me get this paper right here and I'll show you. These coil wires are the Taylor 10.4 uh, millimeter 409 series and they are the 45 boot. And all of them fit very, very well. They clear around everything except for that one right there. If you didn't see my last video, I have I made a bracket basically out of a piece of steel, bolted it to the valve cover and twisted it with a cushion clamp, quarter 20 bolt with a nylock nut so it doesn't come loose. And it's got all kinds of clearance around my steering shaft. So if that's a idea that some of you might like to use, that works fine. I'll show you the other side. The other side, no problem. Only clearance issue I had was it's close to the dipstick tube. You can probably twist this around and get it off of it. So I'm not too worried about that, but clearance all the way around and that's gonna that's gonna wrap out this video guys i appreciate you guys stopping in just gonna show you what i did and maybe give you guys some ideas of how to put your ls in your s10 some things that i've ran into that might help you out so if you like this content hit that like button don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe before you leave we'll catch you in the next episode